But today is October 28th, and I wanted to share with you something that God's been speaking to me personally that I think I may not be the only one that needs to hear right now. So first I'm going to open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for your faithfulness through what has been an interesting and challenging year or two. We thank you for remaining steadfast and strengthening us through the challenges and the trials that many of us are facing right now or have already faced and are trusting you. I thank you, Lord God, that you will tear down the strongholds that the giants will fall and that in the midst, as we stand and stand firm, that you are faithful and you will uphold us with your righteous right hand. I just give you glory, God. I ask Holy Spirit that you would anoint my lips, that you would uh, open the ears and eyes of our hearts, that we would receive new revelation from you and that people will be blessed by hearing this message from all over that are listening. Amen. So I wanted to share some personal things with you all today, and one of them is I'm getting into a place where I've been focusing on the soap business, I've been focusing on raising my children as a stay-at-home mom and looking at ways to earn income on the side, and it's been a real blessing, and I'm so thankful for my husband Gary for supporting us and allowing us to take that leap of faith with the Lord so that we can keep our family first as the highest priority in our house. At the same time, there have been areas where the Lord's been stretching me. And one of those areas um, is that I have uh, recorded my childbirth testimony from my second daughter that was just born in July. And it's going to be, it's going to be played on an Instagram account for Supernatural Childbirth Mamas. And I'm so excited about it because it's going to help encourage other moms who were believing for a childbirth as God intended it to be according to the scriptures, which is pain-free or bearable pain at the least and uh, fear-free for sure and just a supernatural birth because we've been redeemed from the curse in Genesis. Jesus died. He became a curse for all of us. That's the basis of the belief on this and if you're interested there's a great book called Supernatural Childbirth by Jackie Mize which began some of my inspiration and a friend of mine told me about the book when it was my turn to become pregnant and have a baby I wanted to learn more about it and so I do have a testimony there that testimony is going to be shared and I feel like the Lord also wants me to share that testimony to a wider audience as well through some other areas. Aside from that, um, I have my Instagram account and we have this podcast and, and there are just some other areas where I felt the Lord calling me to, to rise up and speak out in a greater way than I have before. One of them is just promoting my soap business. People like to see live videos on Instagram, on Facebook, And those are my least favorite things to do. (laughs) You know, you feel vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there. You don't always say the right thing the exact right way or, you know, may stumble over our words or feel like, you know, I don't look a certain way or I don't look sharp enough to be doing a video on Instagram. I don't look like these other media influencers. And I I have no, no desire to be an influencer. I was doing these videos because people like to hear from me and and hear from me in person about my soap and my products. And I like connecting with people. I love people. I'm a people person. So from that extent, I was kind of pushing myself to do them. It's something I'm uncomfortable with. And I'm also, um, I recently started taking some amazing products by a company called Plexus. It's a Christian company and God literally dropped the name of that company in my mind after a few months after I had our second daughter, Jera. And so God literally led me to take these products that I hadn't even heard or seen anyone talk about or mention in over 10 years. I remember it was about 10 years ago, a friend of mine just happened to tell me how amazing she felt when she started taking these. 
So I went through my own process of kind of like, are you sure, Lord? You know, I just quit my job. Are you sure you want me to, you know, sign up and order this right now? And and he confirmed it to me. And I stumbled across somebody on a mom's group on Facebook who was talking about um, some of the products and how much they've helped her. I knew that God kept confirming to me he wanted me to do this. So I'm just explaining this because it's backstory and you need to know. So I decided to do it. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling amazing. I'm really happy. I love that it's a Christian company and they're just unafraid to speak the gospel. They're unafraid to talk about the Lord. And it's so refreshing for me because I was working in a very liberal workplace before this. My point in saying that is if I want to pursue, these products have changed me so much and helped me so much that I can't wait to share them with other people. And that's just... I have to really believe in something in order to sell it or share it with other people. It's just my integrity, you know. I I want to only do good for people. I want to help people. I want to benefit people. I always want to help and benefit people. I can't in good conscience tell somebody about something with an ulterior motive or a selfish motive. I just... It just doesn't sit right with me. So I feel good about this product. So that's, there's no issues there for me. Even in just sharing it and getting on Instagram and starting to, you know, I haven't done any videos to talk about it yet, but I'm going to. And so the Lord challenged me because between the childbirth testimonies, the soap business, doing videos for that, and then this new area that I'm looking at as a a way to earn, earn money, to just help support our family so that we can have more opportunities. You know, as my children get older, we're gonna homeschool them. We wanna be able to travel. We wanna be able to do ministry things. We wanna be able to bless other people. We wanna be a blessing so we can bless other people, so we can help people start businesses, so we can, you know, start other businesses to make more money, so that we can look at areas to help with needs people have, you know, support some of the areas that we've, We really like supporting. We really like helping people find inner healing and deliverance. We really like helping and donating towards people who are recovering from trafficking or uh, human slavery, things like that. People recovering from addiction, all kinds of areas. My husband and I, Gary, we have a heart for, and we really want to make a difference. That's our desire more than anything when we leave this life we want to make a difference we were born in such an amazing country where there's so much opportunity and if you work hard in this country you can make money and it's not always easy because there are some tricky things about our country as well we do have an opportunity that people in many other countries don't have and we know that and we want to help people in other countries, developing nations who don't have an opportunity and are more trapped in their circumstances through no fault of their own. We want to send money to them. We want to help them. We are sponsoring a child through Compassion International, things like that. Like we just, that's who we are as a couple. That's where we want to go. But I told the Lord, I don't want to be an influencer. I'm uncomfortable with the idea of being an influencer. And when I say that, I'm really referring to the social media influencers. And maybe you guys know there's a kind of a stereotypical person that you see on Instagram that has a very high following. And to me, I'll just be completely honest. Like to me, I just see these these beautiful women with bleach blonde hair, perfect makeup. Everything in the background is curated it looks perfect it's trendy it's on point there's no clutter everything looks like a magazine cover and women are on there they look like their life is perfect and they're they're selling things or doing things they're probably making a lot of money and you know even though there are people like that that don't fit that stereotype that i personally i enjoy seeing their posts you know some of the ladies through the supernatural childbirth channel like they are amazing women their heart is to help people they love god they want to help people they do ministry things they do missionary things their heart is to help people and they're amazing and they don't fit that stereotype at all and yet for me when i see myself getting on and doing these videos i think oh i don't want to be one of those shallow influencers And like I said, there's so many that are not shallow that I've learned so much from their podcasts or I've learned so much from their Instagram page or their web page. 
And I love seeing their videos because I feel like I'm getting to know them as a person. But this is just an area where my heart got exposed. And the Lord was, he gave me a gentle rebuke and he kind of said, you don't want to be an influencer? I've called you to be an influencer. I have called you to change the culture. And that's true, isn't it? Isn't it true that God has called his people, those of us that are children of God, hasn't he called us to be agents of change? Hasn't he called us to be influencers? Let's look at a couple scriptures where God has uh, has spoken about these things. So I'm going to take you first to Matthew 5, verse 13 through 15. Jesus says to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So ladies and gentlemen, he has called us to be the salt of the earth. And if we lose our saltiness and become tasteless, we can't be made salty again. But who wants to eat any food without salt? Food is not enjoyable to eat without a little salt. And the kingdom adds. And salt, it preserves. It makes things last. It, they used to use it to cure food and preserve food. So we are able to, to be agents of change and preserve what is good in those around us. To preserve food and nourishment, spiritual food. And the city on the hill, we are the light of the world. We are the light. And we can't be the light if we just want to sit home on our couch and comment about how much darkness is around. There's a lot of darkness out there and it bothers me. I'm not happy with it. But God has called us to be the light. And if we're silent, our light, his truth, can't shine and it can't affect other people. So I know that this word is not just for me, that he has called us to be his light He has called us to be influencers of culture. And that may look different depending on what it is. It may be that when we're in the grocery store and we see somebody who's down, we don't just say, that's not my business. That's not my problem. I'm just going to be quiet and go about my day. And, you know, I live my life as a witness for Jesus and I don't need to talk to anyone. That's not true. You know, if we're a light, then we're the person that says, hey, you know, you look like you've had a hard day. How are you doing? That's what Jesus would do. Or maybe it means you get on your Facebook and you, you know, you encourage people. And I'm not talking about getting on there and engaging in divisive arguments because we have to be careful about a spirit of division. We have to be careful about conflict. Um, Not afraid of conflict, but the enemy likes to engage in pointless conflict and pointless debate. And the Bible talks a lot about not arguing with fools. There are people that are spiritually unable to see certain things and we need to pray for their blinders to be removed, their eyes to be opened spiritually, but you can't argue with somebody who just doesn't see it. It's not going to produce any fruit. So we need to be wise and not engage in pointless debates or pointless arguments, but at the same time, we should not be afraid of speaking truth and shining light on what needs to be exposed. And I've got another scripture for you as well from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And this is another scripture about influence. Because I think it's so easy for us, isn't it, to discount why I can't be an influencer. No one's going to look up to me. Who cares what I have to say because I don't make a lot of money. I don't have a lot of friends. I don't speak well. You know, Moses, he stuttered. He didn't want to speak to Pharaoh because he didn't speak well. But God didn't really accept that as an excuse, did he? He really didn't. And if we look at Gideon, 
You know, Gideon was afraid. He was afraid, and yet God used him. He said that he would be enough. His, that God would give Gideon courage. So this, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. So he is calling us to be an example to those who believe, as well as to the, to the, to the world, who those who do not yet believe. And verse 14 says, Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. So those of us who are believers, who are children of God, we are called to be an example of, example of those who believe we're supposed we're called to be a good example and we're called to not neglect the spiritual gift within us we're not to neglect those gifts we're to let our light shine i just want to encourage you because this is the year we're right now in the year 5782 the hebrew year 5782 in 2020 when all of this covid thing started we were in the year 5780, the Hebrew year. And the Hebrew New Year is usually late September is when the year changes. So it's different than our, our calendar year. So the year 5780, 80 represents mouth from the Hebrew uh, letters associated with the, with the numbers, the symbols. It represents mouth. And when you look back at the symbolic nature spiritually it was the year that we were all silenced we were all told to put on masks and the news media and all of the uh, current events happening there was a silencing of anyone who had questions about facts or saw discrepancies in what was being reported and here we are we're we're we've seen that ease up a little bit here we are in 2021, the end of 2021, and we're now in the Hebrew calendar year 5782 because that just happened in uh, September. And again, 80 means mouth, so that's going to be part of the symbolism for the year. But the two represents the Son of God, so we're looking at the mouth, but we're also looking at the Son. We're looking at Jesus and speaking what he has us to speak so i just want to encourage you that whatever area you have influence whatever area you have god-given talents and abilities to ask holy spirit how can i use these in what areas am i uncomfortable being an influencer in what areas am i uncomfortable achieving and being known as a leader am i uncomfortable being viewed as a leader because it's not comfortable. The more people that look up to you, the more people that hear what you have to say, the more you're going to be criticized. The more you're going to be persecuted. The more you're going to meet resistance. But you're also going to benefit because other people are going to say, wow, you really encouraged me the other day. I was just, I was really needing encouragement. I was really frustrated and I just thought of you. And it was so encouraging. And, you know, to be honest, a lot of people may never say that, but they're feeling it or they're thinking it. And even if they never say it, we don't know how much we can be an example to others. And I want to read one last scripture to you. This is from Proverbs 31, verse 20 through 26. And we've all heard the saying about the Proverbs 31 woman, but this is also talking about her husband. And so... This is how she's described as. She extends her hands to the poor and she stretches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. And so purple was very expensive. The, the things that you needed to dye garments purple were very expensive. And so she was wearing fine, expensive clothing. Her husband is known in the gates. That was the place of influence. That was the place where the men of the day would sit and talk about political matters, important matters. So her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. 
So her husband had a reputation. He had influence. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. So this woman was wealthy. She was resourceful. She had contacts. She was well-known. And she was not afraid of the future. She had hope. She was able to dream big. She was able to reach out and have hope for the future. Because she worked hard. Because she was kind to the needy. And God provided for her. God blessed her. And I believe that this is showing us not just that this woman was some kind of superwoman. I always kind of resented her a little bit. Like there's this superwoman that hardly gets any sleep and works so hard and She's successful, but it looks like she's working so, so hard beyond what most of us could do. But yet, I think really it's a reflection of God's blessing on her and her willingness to do her part. Because her heart was aligned with God, she had a heart for the poor and helped out to the needy. God blessed her because of that. And she didn't limit her, she didn't allow her own mind to be a limitation. I think a lot of times we allow our own minds to limit what our success could be. I am very guilty of doing this and I'm trying to break these mindsets right now in this season because I know I'm in a place where God's calling me to a higher higher position of influence and he's calling me to do things that are different and uncomfortable for me because he wants to bless me. He wants to bless my family. So I thank you God And I just ask that you would bless those who are listening, that you would reach out to them and show them areas where we, we have mindsets that are obstacles and show us how to overcome those obstacles. Show us how to overcome those mindsets so that we can be the salt and the light. We can be an influencer and represent Jesus well. Amen.